And I believe that we're going now. So uh, again, thank you for uh, putting this together for us, Bob. And I will let you take it away and introduce yourself. And uh, like you're that. welcome. So I'm Bob Crowley. I'm a software developer in Portland, Maine, or actually from home since March, which is gray Maine, but close enough. Um, primarily work in the .NET stack. I've been doing a lot of Azure stuff and um, really got interested in automating Azure because you know there are a lot of things that are kind of tedious to deploy. You know, when we've got something in a development environment and then we have to hand it off to infrastructure, for instance, because we don't have access to production, you know, it's a lot easier to just hand them a script than to sit next to them and say, click here, now click here, now type this, now click here. So um, I put together this presentation. Um, it's definitely not a deep dive by any means. It's an introduction to you know getting started, introducing a few of the commandlets, you know how to run them, some interesting um, side topics along the way. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this and we'll get something good out of it. So I just want to make sure everyone's seeing my screen my uh, PowerPoint slides because the, the display is different. Like I'm seeing all of your images instead of my screen, which is different than I'm used to. So. Yeah, I gotcha. OK. All right, so uh, let's get started. So everything in Azure is automatable. Um, the Azure CLI command line interface and Azure PowerShell commandlets can do just about everything. Um, they can't do absolutely everything, and sometimes they lag behind the features. But as we'll talk about at the end, um, Azure Resource Manager templates can literally do everything, and, and they can do everything from day one. So um, everything is automatable. Um, we're not going to talk about REST APIs or SDKs. Those are certainly available, and those are very useful, and I use those too. But um, this is just about um, PowerShell and CLI command line. So command line interface. Um, it's an environment to create and manage Azure resources. It's available across Azure services, designed to get you working quickly with Azure with an emphasis on automation. So this is Microsoft's. Um, copy pasted definition of the Azure CLI. And I have a link right there to um, where I got this from. I can share these slides uh, later on if you would like. It's cross platform, so, you know, it works on Mac, Linux, Windows. You can use your choice of shell, Bash, PowerShell, um, supports long running operations. So you can kick off an operation and then go away and it'll keep going in the background. Configurable, so a lot of times when you're writing scripts, you're setting a resource group, for example. Every resource in Azure has to be in a resource group. So you're setting that resource group all the time or you're setting your location all the time. So East US, Central US, whatever your location is. Um, it's configurable in that you can basically set that as a default and then you don't have to type those in again. Um, it's just going to um, use what you've said. There's an interactive mode, which is really great. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this, but basically it helps you um, come up with the commands and it, it shows you choices for, for things. And it's really great if you don't know the commands. Uh, it's really great if you don't remember like the names of all your resources you need to choose. Um, looking forward to showing you that. Hey, Karen. So, whoop. installation, I'm not really going to go over it, but it does have to be installed. Um, for Windows, there's MSI, you know, apt curl on Linux, homebrew on Mac OS. Um, the Azure Interactive that I just mentioned also has to be installed separately. And it will install when you try to use it for the first time. So let's go into a demo. 
I'm going to. All right, so I have that red border around the screen, so I assume you're seeing my Visual Studio code right now. I'll take that as a yes. Yep, we got gotcha. you. All right, thanks. All right, so here's some CLI scripts. Um, here's one to log in. Um, you might notice that the file is a PowerShell script, and I said we're using Azure CLI, not PowerShell in the first demo. So what's going on here? Well, Azure CLI needs an environment to execute in. You can do it on the command prompt. You can do it in a PowerShell script. Um, you can do it in a couple other places I'm going to demonstrate. So, um, so that's what's going on. That's why I have a PowerShell script here, but I'm running Azure CLI commands. So all of the Azure CLI commands start with AZ. And it's it follows a pattern AZ account for your Azure account, AZ group for resource groups, et cetera, et cetera. What this script does is it logs you in. And I'm showing you this because this can be a gotcha, especially if you have multiple subscriptions. So whenever you're using the Azure CLI, you have to log in no matter what. But once you're logged in, you're going to be connected to your default subscription. And that's not necessarily the one you want to be operating on. It doesn't really, it's not really um, obvious what subscription you're connected to. And so if you think you're connected to a subscription that has a certain amount of credits and you're creating all kinds of resources in a subscription that doesn't, you could be spending money. Um, and ask me how I know about that. So this is an important one to pay attention to. So all I'm doing here is I'm I'm grabbing some environment variables that I've set up so that I don't have to give you my um, subscription ID and stuff in this GitHub repo. And I'm calling AZ login with my tenant, and then I'm calling account set subscription to the subscription I want to connect to. Now this last line isn't rec isn't required, but again. If you're connected to the wrong account, you're going to have to do a set here. And I've already connected um, just to um, not tempt the, the demo gods too much. So I'm going to move on to the next script. And if this is too small or not readable, someone just let me know and I'll, I'll bump it up. All right, so here's a bunch of things we're going to do. Um, this is just standard PowerShell, write host. This is just so we have a little bit of logging in here. AZ group list, one of the one of the simpler commands. And what this does is it just lists all of your Azure resource groups. Okay, so if I run that, I get this big list here of all the resource groups that are in the subscription I'm connected to. Notice it's JSON. OK, so we've got an array here and then we've got a, you know, each resource group is a JSON object in this array. And that's something you definitely need to um, get used to pretty quick is that Azure CLI output is all JSON. So let's see, I've listed groups. so. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a resource group. And here I'm, uh, like we talked about right at the beginning, I'm calling into system.io.path to generate a random file name. So you can call into base class library from PowerShell. And I'm using this just as a helper because I need a random, a resource group has to be unique. And I don't want to have to remember or guess, so I'm just generating a random uh, string. And I'm setting that as the name of the resource group. So I'm generating that random name, and then I'm going to call az group create. So notice, you know, the verb, the noun and the verb az group create. I'm setting the location. And that location is central US. So every resource in Azure has to be put into a region. 
And there's a number of regions you can use. I'm choosing Central US for this one. And the name is this random name that I generated up on line number nine. And then I'm going to do a query for the ID. And so what query is, is it queries that JSON output. And it's going to pull the ID from that output out. And it's going to set it to this ID variable right here. Um, as we're going to see in just a few minutes, queries get more complex. The reason this one works with such a simple ID is because I'm creating a single resource group. It's not going to return an array. OK, so there's going to be a property that is an ID, and I can just query it, and I can set a variable to an ID. Generally, it's not going to be that simple. You're going to have to like pick something out of an array or um, do something a little more complex. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tag that resource group. So in Azure, you can set tags on your resources, and that helps with um, just organizing things. You can say this tag means that this is a development resource, or this tag means it you know, belongs to this cost center. The tags are for whatever you need them for. Um, and you don't, you don't have to tag anything, um, but I'm just demonstrating another Azure CLI command here. So az resource tag, and then I'm passing the tags. So the key value is owner Alice. Another key value is purpose test. Another one is to delete true. And um, the ID of the resource that I'm tagging is this ID that I pulled out in the line number 10 over there. So if I execute this block, And there we go. So we created a resource group and it output some stuff by default for that resource group. Um, that resource group has an ID and it's a kind of a big long ID. Notice the um, random file name here. And if I go to that resource group, I should be able to see those tags. So let's see if I can. Drag my Azure subscription up here. So I've got a bunch of resource groups. And forget which one it was by now. MBY4. I don't see it. Am I in the right subscription? I am. Well, we should be able to look at another one I created before. And let's see if this has those same tags on it. It does not. Well, this is embarrassing. Oh, here it is. Either I didn't see it or it took a while to show up. Probably just didn't see it. So if I look at the tags, I see owner Alice purpose test to delete true. Okay. All right. So I'm going to basically do the same thing again here a couple more times. Um, I'm going to set separate tags. I'm going to create new um, resource group names. This resource group is going to be in the East US instead of the Central US. And so basically the point of doing two more resource groups is I'm going to demonstrate some querying. Um, and so I need you know, some things with different values to query. So I'm just going to run this block. There's the first one. And there's the second one. 
OK. So let's talk about James Path. So. James Path is not a Microsoft thing. It's not an Azure thing, um, but it's something that Azure and the Azure CLI supports. So you can go to this jamespath.org and you can do tutorials. You can read about it. Um, it's a way of querying JSON on a command line, basically. And the Azure CLI supports this for querying output. And so what I've got here is a bunch of James Path queries. So the first one is I'm going to query all the resource groups that are in the central US location. OK, so this is the syntax to query an array. And choose a property and you know equal to whatever it is you want it to be equal to. So that ran a little fast. Um, let me do that again just to make sure. Yeah, so I've got a bunch of um, resource groups in central US apparently. So let's run one with tags, OK? So what I'm doing is I'm plucking out resource groups in the central US that have tags, not specific tags, but just ones that have tags. So if I run that, so now we only get two, OK? So there are two in the central US that have tags, and these are the tags that I, I just created. And if you recall, this last resource group was in the East US, and that's why it didn't show up. So the next one is tags that has the purpose of QA. OK, so now we return just one. So if you noticed, you know, one of these purpose was test. This time we got just the QA one. And you can keep going. Um, purpose is QA, and we want the owner. OK, so the owner is Wally. So the purpose QA owner Wally. So we got the value of the owner. Notice it's an array. Um, that's That might be what you want, but it's probably usually not what you want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pipe that array into an indexer. And I'm going to say I just want the first one, index 0. Oops. I accidentally hit run the whole script. Let's try that again. OK. So I indexed into the first one, index zero. And this time I got Wally instead of Wally as an array. Um, but notice it's in quotes. Um, so this is another gotcha. Um, if you set this as a variable and you use it as input into another command, um, depending on the command and how it's being used, this might not work because of those quotes around it. So this is something you can do. So I'm doing basically the same command here, except I'm choosing the output format. And by default, output is JSON. So if you don't put anything, um, it's the same thing as using dash dash output JSON. But here I'm doing table separated, tab separated value. And if I run that, now I just get Wally without the quotes. And that's typically what you want from an output. Um, this is documented, like if you search for how to retrieve one value um, with James Path in the Azure CLI, you know, it will tell you this output tab separated value. Um, it seems kind of hacky to me and not intuitive to do it that way, but um, we got what we got, I guess. All right, so that's an introduction to James Path. Um, that can get really complex. Um, I don't even pretend to understand all of James Path, um, but uh, I Google my way through it when I need it. So now I'm going to 
do some of the same kind of stuff, except. Here's a result from the web. <laughs> My Google is talking to me. Don't say Google, Alexa. OK, so here's a bit of an easier way to, to mine values out of a CLI output. So here I'm doing group show um, with the same name that I created earlier. Get rid of that real quick. And I'm going to convert to JSON. So this is a PowerShell thing. This is not an Azure CLI thing. So notice I'm I'm using Azure CLI and I'm mixing in PowerShell. Okay. And so that turns it into basically an object. So it converts it from JSON into a PowerShell object. And now you can do dot notation. Okay, so instead of doing all this crazy James Path stuff, you can do the result dot tags, dot tags dot owner. So I'm going to run that whole group. And notice I get you know the tags and and the owner here. And I don't know about you, but um, this is a lot easier and more intuitive than some crazy James path, but um, I guess it's whatever your comfort zone is and you know whatever specific task you're doing. So now I can clean up AZ group delete. I have to pass it the group name and I'm using no weight. So I think I mentioned right at the beginning that you can do background operations and that's what no weight is. And I'm resetting my console color because I've had a lot of trouble with that sometimes where I can't even see my output. All right, so. So Azure PowerShell is next. Are there any questions before we move on to another topic? Jim says in C sharp, the pipe would be a binary or. Yep. Yep. So that's a different thing in PowerShell. All right. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to move on. All right. So Azure PowerShell. So this is again the Microsoft documentation set of commandlets for managing Azure resources from the command line. Designed to make it easy to learn and get started, provides powerful features for automation. It's written in .NET standard, works with PowerShell 5.1 on Windows and PowerShell 6X and higher on all platforms. And there's the link to you know the whole page that I got this snippet from. So um, as I mentioned just a minute ago, it's cross-platform or it can be. There is a Windows PowerShell, but there's also a cross-platform PowerShell. Just like the CLI, it works in your whatever shell you want. It's discoverable, so you can do get-command, get-help, and you can um, basically research all the different commands that are available. Um, consistency, so the API is consistent with PowerShell in general. Notice the discoverable bullet point, get you know, verb noun, get command, verb noun, get help. Um, it follows all the same conventions as other PowerShell commandlets. Interactive environments are available. Um, it's object oriented, not text output. It's pipeable. And we just saw an example of that in the Azure CLI demo where we converted to JSON and then we could work with it as an object. Again, uh, installation is pretty easy, so I'm not going to spend much time on this. You know, there's a MSI installer, or you can use the .NET tool install. Connecting, just like with the Azure CLI, um, you have to be careful about what subscription you're connected to if your account has access to more than one. And now let's get into a demo. So here's my PowerShell demo. And just like I did with the CLI, 
um, I logged in here and I connected to the correct account already. But this is how you do it. Connect dash AZ account. So let's go right over here to the demo. All right, so here's a real easy command, get AZ resource group. Okay, so just like we did in the previous demo, I'm gonna run this and it's gonna show me all of my resource groups. The formatting is not JSON, okay? Um, this is the default formatting that PowerShell gives you. These are objects. Um, not just JSON strings. One thing I want to point out is all of these PowerShell for Azure commandlets start with AZ. So it's AZ resource group, um, AZ key vault, whatever. If you're researching these commandlets, you will probably come across ones that use um, Azure RM. Okay. Azure RM came before just the AZ commandlets. So you want to be careful um, what documentation you're reading because it's real easy to think you're looking at the new um, Azure command line, um, Azure PowerShell commandlets, but you're actually looking at what's basically a deprecated set of commandlets. Um, you actually cannot even have them both installed at the same time. You can install a bridge so that you can use your old um, your old scripts with the new AZ commandlets, um, but you can't have them both installed at the same time. All right, so um, we're going to do basically the same thing we did with the Azure CLI. I'm going to run all these at once instead of one by one. Um, it's doing the same thing. We're creating resource groups. We're setting tags. Um, in this command, we're setting tags in two separate commands. This is just to demonstrate that, you know, there's a new AZ resource group command to create a resource group, and there's a set AZ resource group command to update a resource group. Okay. In these subsequent commands, I'm just doing it all in the new resource group, all in one shot. So just a little variety here. Okay, there we go, there we go, and we're done. Okay, so we've got, you know, three random resource groups created with various tags and various locations. So now we're going to query. Um, so here's a another way to query. So this is PowerShell. This is not um, Azure PowerShell specific, but the where object is a way to query output, and so. I'm going to get an AZ resource group where the location is central US. Um, so I've got these two resource groups right here, which is what we expected. Now what I'm doing is again central US where tags is not equal to null. And so in this case, syntax is maybe a little bit more obtuse than the Azure CLI command where, um, you know, you didn't have to use the, um, the, equal, the not equal symbol, but it works. Okay, so this time we only got one. And now we want to get the, uh, the resource group in the central US where the tag purpose is named test. Okay, so purpose test. So we got that resource group. Just showing you a few options here um, for querying output from PowerShell. And again, just like I did before, you can remove an Azure resource group to clean up your resources that you created. All right. And I 
think that is all I've got for PowerShell. Now, are there any questions before I move on and show you Cloud Shell? Nothing? All right, so, so I was using Visual Studio Code to run all my commands. And that works great because you can select certain lines of text and execute those without running the whole script. And it has IntelliSense and everything. But I wanted to show you Cloud Shell. Um, Cloud Shell is great in that it is an environment right in your browser that automatically connects to your Azure subscription and lets you do all the same things I was just doing. Um, it has Bash support, has PowerShell support. And what's going on with my slides here? So I don't know what's going on there. I'm using um, PowerPoint online, so I don't know, maybe there's a glitch or something. But I think we're back. So it has bash support, has built-in help. Um, you can change font settings and stuff, and I'm going to demo the Cloud Shell here, so I'm going real fast through these slides. As file management, you can upload files, you can upload scripts, and I'm going to execute a script that I have uploaded. Web preview, um, this is interesting. I'm not going to demonstrate this, but you can basically stand up a .NET Core website right in the um, storage of your Cloud Shell. So you can literally do a .NET new, create a website right here in the Cloud Shell, and it will actually be you know, served live and you can hit it with your browser. It's kind of kind of neat. It has basically the Visual Studio Code editor built in, or at least um, some flavor of it. And now let's demonstrate. All right, so one way to get to Cloud Shell, um, if you haven't noticed, when you're in Azure, there's this little button up here, and it's for Cloud Shell. Um, kind of hides up there. A lot of people don't see it. But if you click that, it's going to pop up this, this window here where you have a split screen, and it's going to automatically connect to your Azure subscription. But what I like to do, so I'm going to close this. I like to go to shell.azure.com. And I need to choose a directory. Hopefully, I don't have to look. There we go. I'm glad I didn't have to go through my multi-multi-factor authentication while you're watching. Okay, so here's Cloud Shell. Um, it's a terminal in the browser, and um, you can use the Azure CLI, you can use the Azure PowerShell commands, AZ group list, for instance, and there are my resource groups. Um, apparently, I'm not connected to the same subscription that I was before because I've only got three resource groups showing up here. But that's fine. Um, if we take a little tour here, um, we can see those text and font settings. We can do upload and download of files. We can um, open a new window. We can get to the editor. So that's what this little button is. And here's your Visual Studio Code Editor, or um, some version of it, like I mentioned. Um, I've got some files in here. So I've got this. This is probably too small for you to see, but I've got this PowerShell script. 
that creates a key vault. So I've already uploaded this. And just to walk through it real quick, um, I can list my accounts. I can set my account. Um, you know, just to make sure that I'm in the right one, I can create a variable to set the location to East US. Again, I'm getting um, a random file name. I'm creating a group. And now I'm creating a key vault. So the Azure CLI command for creating a key vault is AZ key vault create. You know, it's pretty intuitive. Um, if you're not sure what a key vault is, that is basically a place to store secrets or encryption keys or um, certificates. And that's an Azure service that um, you can integrate with in code and with, you know, Azure CLI and all kinds of neat things, Azure DevOps. Um, once I create that key vault, I'm going to create a secret in the key vault. So um, again, one of the three things you can create is a secret. Um, you can create as many secrets as you want. But if I execute all of this code, um, if I try to spell it right. There we go. That looks better. OK, so it's still running. Hopefully this won't take too long. At least so far, we can see the random file name that it created. And there we go. Created the key vault, created the secret. If we go look at it, I can go over to my Azure subscription and go to key vaults. And let me make sure which one that was. Key. ORCI. Again, this may take a little bit to show up, but it's not terribly important. Let's see if one of these other ones has a secret in there. So if I go over here and I go to secrets, so here's the keys, certificates, and secrets. So there's master password. So I've done this demo before. This is the same thing that. Um, that I just created in the Cloud Shell. And you have to drill in a while to get to your secrets, but um, right at the bottom here, you get the screen. You get the secret identifier, which is a, a URI. And this is what you reference when you're pulling secrets from wherever you're pulling them from, from Azure DevOps, from .NET applications, from REST APIs, whatever. And you can show the secret value here, um, password one. All right, so, so that's what that did. And I want to show you something else that's pretty cool, I think. So this is my had this all set up and of course it timed out or something. And what I'm trying to do here is get it so that we can actually see it. 
know why it's zoomed in so much. If you hit control zero, does that get you back to normal? No, it's not a browser. This is um, I'm mirroring my, mirroring my phone here. Let's uh, yeah, that's strange. I was not doing this before. So I'm going to see how this goes, but we may have to ditch this demo. But what I've got here is the Android app for Azure. And if I fire that up, of course, it's going to take a long time. I was hoping to connect my new phone, which is super fast, but I don't have a USB-C data cable. I only have a power cable. All right, so apparently I can scroll at least. Um, but I can't scroll to the bottom. Yeah, we're going to have to ditch this demo. But um, what I was going to show you is that you can run the Cloud Shell from this Android app. And um, together with uploading scripts makes it kind of neat for um, one-off or emergency situations if you have something if you have a script in there and you're you know away from the computer you can just fire up your android app and run that script right in the cloud shell only it's on your phone so yeah let's move on uh, if that's the worst thing that happens in the demo i guess i guess it won't be too bad all right where do we leave off any questions so far before I move on to the Azure Resource Manager templates? No? All right. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. So Azure Resource Manager templates. Um, it's another way to automate Azure. Um, it's not quite the same use case as the Azure CLI or PowerShell, um, but it is Azure Automation. Um, it's kind of like the desired state configuration, if you're familiar with that term. Um, it describes resources you want in Azure, and it creates them or it updates them, or it does nothing if they're already there. Um, so that's one of the useful things. It's a JSON file that contains instructions for um, what I just said, creating, updating Azure resources. Um, you can execute these templates with something that understands them. So Azure CLI, um, PowerShell, the Azure Portal, DevOps, you know, um, they're not exactly executable code in themselves. They have to be passed to something that knows how to run them, um, which passes them on to the Azure Resource Manager. So why would you choose Resource Manager templates? Um, Declarative syntax describes what you want, not the how. So as we were doing command line, you know, we were telling it create new resource groups, create a key vault, et cetera, et cetera. Um, resource manager template just says, you know, I want a key vault and it will create it for you. It has repeatable results. Um, I already touched on this. Templates are idempotent. So if everything in that template is already there, there are going to be no changes. You don't have to worry about overriding anything. You know, it's not going to blow away um, your resources or, or any state. Orchestration. Um, correct order of operations is handled automatically in quotes. Um, it does a pretty good job of knowing what to create um, in what order, but um, you can also tell it what order to create things in. 
it'll perform parallelism as appropriate. So if you've got a, a template that contains a whole bunch of resources that you're creating, a lot of them have nothing to do with the other one. Um, it can create those at the same time. So that makes it a little better than maybe the CLI or PowerShell. Again, you can apply the no wait. If you recall, we, we applied a no wait command um, to do things in the background. Um, but Azure Resource Manager templates um, do a great job of figuring out what it can do all, all at the same time. Has built in validation. So your template will be validated and whatever you're using to deploy it will scream at you if you have any kind of error. They're modular. You can compose templates. You can nest templates inside other templates. So if you have a template that creates a key vault and they're, it's pretty generic, you can embed that in all of your other templates that need to create a key vault. You don't have to you know, recreate that wheel every time. And as I mentioned, um, I think at the beginning, um, everything in Azure can be created with an Azure Resource Manager template from day one that it's available in Azure. Okay, the Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, they lag behind at least a little bit. Um, they're usually pretty fast from my experience, but the ARM templates are available right now. So if you need a new resource that just came out of preview today, you can use ARM templates. Track deployments. So um, this is another good thing. As we we're running those command line scripts, it wasn't really keeping track. Um, it wasn't really logging um, in a place where you can go and see what was deployed. ARM templates automatically track deployment history. So you can go into a deployments blade in your Azure resource and it'll show you, you know, a history of the deployments you've done with these templates. And you can also view the parameters that were set and the outputs that were output. Um, other infrastructures code services are not tracked this way. Policy. So when using Azure Policy, remediation is done on ARM templates. So Azure Policy is a way to um, kind of rein in control of your subscription. You can do things like require a certain tag on resources, or you can say no one's allowed to create, you know, a virtual machine greater than a certain SKU, or, um, you know, those are just a couple examples. Um, but policy lets you basically lock down some things you know, to prevent people going crazy and spending too much money or creating errors, et cetera, et cetera. Policy is a big topic. Um, I'm not really going to go into it except to say that ARM templates um, automatically remediate those policies and it'll let you know if they're being violated. CICD, so Azure DevOps has, if you're familiar with Azure DevOps, you know, when you're creating a pipeline, you add tasks. You know, there's a built-in task to deploy Azure Resource Manager templates. Exportable code, so you can generate templates right from the Azure portal. And um, I might demonstrate that for you. Authoring support, so a lot of tools have authoring support for templates. Um, these templates can get pretty daunting to look at. You know, if you're not used to them, they can be huge, you know, it's it's this huge wall of JSON. You're like, I have no idea what's going on. There's no way I could write this myself. Um, pretty much nobody writes them themselves from scratch. Um, they use helpers, you know, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. Um, they really help you along. Plus back here where I talked about exportable code, you know, you can get a, a really good start in Azure by exporting an existing resource. So here's the anatomy of a template. This is basically a template stripped out, you know, everything stripped out of it except the um, basically the the things that are required. So it has it starts with a schema, and you can literally use that schema um, 
there is a newer one. Visual Studio Code will tell you that there's a newer one. It'll update it for you automatically. Um, but that 2015 schema will work. Content version, API profile. We're going to go over all of these individually in the following slides. Parameters, variables, functions, resources, outputs. But these are all of the sections of an ARM template. They're not all required, um, but, but this is it. Um, what goes inside those braces, you know, can be miles and miles long, but this is basically the general anatomy of a template. As I already talked about, schema, it's required. You can literally use that value right there. Content version, also required, but it's a user-defined value. Um, Azure doesn't use this for anything. It's just for your use. Um, it'll show up in the deployments that I, that I touched on a few minutes ago. Um, it's whatever you want. It's it's a version, so version one or version, you know, point nine. You know, whatever you want or need it to be. API profile. So different resources have different API versions. You can kind of set an API version at the top level scope so that you don't have to set it in all of the subsequent items in the list if you want. You don't have to do this. Parameters. So just like a program, you know, just like a, a function or a method takes parameters, Azure templates take parameters so that you can reuse your templates. Um, for instance, if you're creating a key vault, you can make the name templatized. You can make the location templatized. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So you can use the same template over and over again and just pass in the things that are going to change. Variables, again, just like programming, you know, you can create variables inside the script. These are not passed in, but that these are evaluated at runtime and you can reuse them in multiple locations. Functions, so there is executable code that you can put in the template. Um, we're going to see a couple examples of built in ones. You can write your own um, and that just helps you um, come up with things at runtime and that'll that'll be more clear when I when I show them to you. Resources, so this is the section that actually. Is, is where you put in all the resources that you want to deploy. So. If you want to create a key vault, you put that in there. If you want to create a key vault and a storage account, you put them both in there. If you want to create a thousand things, you put a thousand things in there. So the resources section is generally going to be the biggest section. Um, you can stipulate dependencies. So I talked about this before. You can say, you know, this is dependent on this other thing in the resources array. And that'll be a hint to the as your resource manager to create that other thing first. Outputs, so your template can output a value, and that's pretty handy if you want to use that output as input to another template. So you can uh, chain them together and nest them together. All right, so let's um, let's look at a template. Um, I'm I think I'm basically showing you this walkthrough. Like I have this bit.ly link here of a walkthrough of a ARM template demo um, that Microsoft has created. Um, it's really great. It's it's easy, um, and I recommend it. But I'm going to basically show that to you right now. So here is my template. OK, if I collapse some things up here, you might recognize some of the things from the slides. So here's the schema, the content version, parameters, variables, resources, and outputs. So for parameters here, I've got three defined. So this template will accept. You can pass three different things into it. Storage prefix. So looks like I'm creating a storage account. Yep, I'm creating a storage account. So I can pass in a prefix. So whatever I'm naming that storage account, I can prefix it with something through this parameter. Um, the type is a string. 
I can say the minimum length of that string is a three and the max length is 24. So there are, there are metadata that you can put on these parameters. The storage skew, okay, so the, um, the skew is basically the level of service that you want. So the default value for this parameter is standard locally redundant storage. Um, so if you don't supply the storage SKU, it'll use this one. If you do supply the storage SKU, it has to be from this list. OK, so since I have defined allowed values, um, whatever you pass in has to be on that list or it'll fail. And location. So here's an example of a function. So here's a built-in function, resource group. And when you're deploying this template, you're deploying into a resource group. Everything in Azure goes into a resource group. I probably already said that. Um, so when you're running this template, you're in the context of a certain resource group. And this function will just know what that is. And you can say the default value is the location of whatever resource group you're deploying into right now. OK, so that's. Um, that's a great way to um, just put things in the same location. Again, it's only a default value. You can override that with a parameter. Going down to variables. OK, so here's some more examples of functions. So I'm defining something called unique storage name. So um, storage accounts have a URL, so they, they have a DNS name. They have to be unique across all of Azure. Um, all of the internet, frankly. And so you really need a unique storage name, and that can be challenging in a script because you don't know ahead of time um, what's been taken. <clears throat> so you have some helpers here. So inside this concat, I'm calling unique string, and I'm calling the resource group function again. So there's two more functions. Um, concat is another function. So unique string, what that does is it creates a hash of a value. So the resource group that we're operating in has an ID. Unique string is going to hash that value and create a like 24 character string or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly, but um, <clears throat> that's a way to generate a unique value in a script so you don't have to um, try to guess right and have it fail. And concat just puts together um, different variables. So it's putting together the parameter and the unique string to create the name of this storage group. So moving down to resources, this is a really small resources section. Notice it is an array, but we only have one object in here, and that's a storage account. Um, if you're not familiar with Azure storage accounts, that's um, basically cloud storage. Um, it also supports tables and queues. But right here, um, I'm just setting um, that unique name for its name. I'm setting the location from the parameters, the storage skew from the parameters. And then I'm setting a couple more properties down here. One thing you'll find if you work with ARM templates, you know, these resources have probably dozens and dozens of properties. Um, I'm only using a few, you know, they're not all required, but, um, you know, this is hard coded storage V2 for the kind of storage account. Um, there are a number of other properties you can set if you need them, um, but I'm keeping this simple. Notice this type here. So that is um, very important when you're creating resources. You have to have that type correct, and you can look that up in the Azure portal. Um, there, for a resource of type storage account, it's always going to be this value. Um, for a key vault, it's going to be a different value. Um, but notice the resource manager that um, that handles storage accounts is Microsoft.Storage. You know that'll be different for a key vault. Um, but just keep in mind that um, that type is really crucial. And finally, we get down to outputs, and so. We're not using this output for anything. We're not, you know, feeding it into another process or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you um, how to do it. And so it's going to output this storage endpoint object. 
and its value is going to be um, the primary endpoints of this reference. So this is another function that's built in, and what it does is it gets the Azure Resource Manager reference to that storage account that we created because this is the name of the storage account. Um, the primary endpoints is the basically the URL. And so what this script is going to do is it's going to output the URLs for this new storage account that we created. So when you break it down, yep, is there a question? I was just curious about um, whether that was doesn't look like James path there. Nope, nope, definitely not James path. So um, there's that little helper function that um, ARM provides, you know, just to get a reference to that storage account. Because we don't, you know, right now it's not even created. So this is a way at runtime to get a reference to it after it's created. Um, but it is an object and we can just dot notate the primary endpoints property. So hopefully, when you break it down like that, it's not too complicated. Um, again, to look at a, if you go into a, a resource and you export it, you know, it, it's just a huge wall of JSON and um, it's, it's pretty hard to digest, but hopefully this is broken down well. So now that we've got it, how do we deploy it? So I've got this PowerShell script here that deploys it and it's just new dash AZ resource group deployment. Um, it takes a name. It takes a resource group name. Again, we have to deploy everything into a resource group. So this is the one I want to dump it into. The template file. OK, so that's this file over here. We're just referencing it in the same folder. And remember the parameters that we had. So storage prefix, I'm passing S-T-O-R-E. And the storage SKU, I'm uh, um, overriding the default to be standard globally redundant storage. And so all we have to do is run this. And I have a invalid argument. Wasn't expecting that. I think I have a wrong path. Well, rather than troubleshoot this, um, apparently there's something wrong with my code in the GitHub repo. But uh, we're going to do this a different way. Um, trust me, if you know what you're doing, this works. Apparently, I don't, so it's not working. But if I go to the Azure portal, I'm going to get out of the shell here. So. If I go to home, I've got this templates up here because I've used it recently. So if I go into templates, this is a place where you can upload a JSON um, file, which is an Azure Resource Manager template. And I've got one here already loaded up. And if I click on that, and if I click edit, So I should see, or we should see here, um, basically the same template, probably exactly the same template that I just went over. So I've already got this loaded up into Azure. And I could edit this right here if I wanted to, but um, I'm not going to make any changes because I think this is OK. So if I come in here, I have this deploy option, OK? And so I'm going to hit deploy. And you have to choose all of your stuff. Um, ARM temp, that's the one I want to put it in. Storage prefix. Um, uh, 
I'll just put something in there. Notice that um, it's 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 um, showing us the parameters that are in that template. Okay. So when you're deploying a template, you're not always going to see these three. These three are here because these are parameters that I defined. And that goes back to, you know, the environment you're executing the template in, you know, knows how to read them, knows how to execute them. So um, you have to agree to this terms and conditions of the marketplace. Um, sure, I agree. And you hit purchase. Um, the reason it says purchase is because you're probably buying something, especially if you're using a third party template, you know, like, um, oh, I don't know, um, Salesforce, I don't know. Um, somebody who has ARM templates in the Azure marketplace that you can just um, deploy. So I'm going to hit purchase and my deployment is in progress. And I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but we won't wait too long here. Um, it'll notify me when it's done. But if I go to resource groups and I go to that resource group, and uh, okay, so my storage account has been created. We'll look at that in just a second. See this deployments? I mentioned that our Azure templates um, allow you to track deployments. And so if I click on deployments here, I can see that one just succeeded. If I drill into that, so I can see the inputs. So these are my parameters. I can see the outputs. So here's my DNS name for the storage account that was created. And I can even see the template. Okay, and here's a little uh, another view of the parameters and the variables and, and so forth. So this is one of the great advantages of templates over, you know, just scripts, um, because you can go back and you can see what's been done for deployments throughout history. If we go look at that storage account really fast, um, this is the one that was created. And so, not much to look at here, just to show you that that was indeed created. Okay, I think that is pretty close, if not the end. Let's see if we have any more slides here. No, nope, that's it. So um, I've got a list of URLs for resources. Um, if you want to take a screenshot now, and my phone is talking to me again. Um, I will put a share link um, on the meetup site or in this chat so you can get the slides. Um, and there's a bunch of links on this page that um, go over all of the things I talked about. And that is it. Any questions? Right. Very good. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. No question. Sorry. Oh, that's OK. <laughs> it's not required. All right. This is a good demonstration. It's a very good demonstration. You should do more. Yeah. This is yeah. Uh, definitely the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, we use all the time deploying solutions out to Azure and uh, and all that, so um, very, you know, common to use this um, in addition to, like I say, the, the .NET stuff that we do all the time. Uh, yeah, so it's it's really awesome to see this and share it, and definitely appreciate you doing so, Bob. That was uh, really great. No, yeah. you're welcome. Always wanted to get down to your meetup, you know, down at the Microsoft <laughs> store and. You know, now the store is gone and yeah. live in person meetups are gone. And so, but someday, someday I will. Yep. Yep. I understand. I uh, have always enjoyed going up to the Casco Bay meetups and, and stuff like that when I can, but uh, that doesn't happen often enough either. But at least you still have a facility to go to. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. yep. 
it's uh but uh speaking of that sort of thing um you know we're we're still doing the uh granite state code review nightly uh every weeknight at 9 p.m if people are interested in that check it out on the uh, meetup.com site that uh, this was also least listed on um i understand that's a little late for some people but um you know for the most part it's uh kind of a you know just an informal gathering and and talking shop talking about what we did today in code and uh you know sometimes literally going to the point of occasionally reviewing code with each other just to help you know troubleshoot and find problems and uh maybe find cool ways of doing things and and stuff like that at a a micro level um but uh it's usually a pretty good time and um on friday nights we live stream to linkedin and either facebook or sometimes twitch or we'll we'll try a couple of others here too i think we're going to try youtube this weekend uh, this friday so um also pay you know actually when you get a chance uh pay attention for um sharing uh about um code and coda which is uh, an event that our friend joe who is in this meeting actually um uh does on sunday nights and um that is always a, a cool event you know to, to kind of end off the weekend listen to some music and catch some stuff about uh you know coding with uh, bots and alexa and that sort of thing um and let's see any anything else anybody wants to bring up as far as uh, other events and stuff like that all right i will take that as a no um we are working on uh, Granite State Code Camp sometimes in the uh, Code Review Nightly, but uh, generally speaking, we're we're going to be having a uh, an organizational meeting tomorrow. If you um, want to be a part of that, that'll be during the day. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to me, and and we'll uh, get you an invite to it. If you're not already, actually, I think a good number of us in the call here are actually sort of part of that. So definitely appreciate it so and um i guess with that uh i will catch folks later looking forward to hopefully seeing most of you tonight at uh at the code review nightly and and um otherwise we'll see you another time all right jim i'll uh i'll see you at nine <clears throat> awesome thank you all right great talk Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome.